Hi, this week we are going to study thermal conductivity. The most familiar form of heat exchange is actually conduction. This is the flow of heat directly through a physical material. For example, when you are about to heat water for a tea on a hot stove, thermal energy or a heat is transferred through the pot and pot is usually made from a relatively good conducting material. In this experiment, we will study the heat conducting properties for several materials. Let's consider a conductive bar that's initially at a room temperature, and then one end of the bar is placed on a fire. The temperature at that end will begin to rise by making the molecules vibrate with large amplitude. These molecules will then cause neighboring molecules to vibrate with large amplitudes, uh, and so on and so on until the effect is propagated along the entire bar. The amount of heat that's transferred per unit time is given by this equation delta, t, delta Q over delta T is Ka times delta T over L. Here, delta T is a temperature difference between the ends of the bar, A is a cross sectional area of the bar, and L is the length. The constant K is a thermal conductivity of the material. Good conductors such as silver or copper have high thermal conductivity constants. For example, a wood has a really low conductivity constant because a wood is a poor heat conductor. In this experiment, we will calculate the rate of heat flow for different conducting materials. Now, let's take a look what would happen if we have two rods with thermal conductivities K1 and K2 that are used to transfer heat between the two regions with temperatures Th and Tc, as shown here on the figure. Th is larger than Tc. So each rod has a length L and cross-sectional area A. The rods are first configured in parallel and then in series. We want to determine which configuration has the largest heat flow rate. We can start by writing down the expression for the heat flow for each configuration. So first, let's consider this configuration here, two rods connected in series. We are going to write the equation for the heat flow, assuming that at the steady state, delta Q over delta T is constant, and that at middle here we have some unknown temperature Tx. So the equation will look like this. The first part here is for the bar k1 and second part here is for the bar k2. From here we can go ahead and calculate the value for Tx. It depends on the temperature Tc and Th and also on the k1 and k2 values. From here we can write down delta q over delta t by plugging in the value of Tx into this equation and we are going to end up with this term here. Now let's take a look at the parallel configuration. We are going to write down the equation for the heat transfer. It's going to have a portion from the rod 1 and the second part from the rod 2. After some algebra, we are going to end up with this term here. So now we have two equations that are explaining the heat flow for the uh, series and parallel configuration of two rods. We can go ahead and compare these two values. So if we write the heat flow for the series over heat flow for the parallel configuration. Write down the expression for these two, and after some algebra, we are going to end up with this term here. And then finally, from here, we can see that the heat flow for the parallel configuration is larger than the heat flow for the series configuration. This concludes the lecture for the thermal conductivity experiment. Thank you.